write down the number you see in your display, write it down on your page, E equals, now this E here, it's called E for a couple of reasons. What kind of function were we just investigating just now? Exponential functions, thank you very much. Um, if you want to make a title, you can call this calculus of exponential functions. Now, we looked at a bunch of different exponential functions, a bunch of different ones, like 2 to the power of x, 3 to the power of x, 4 to the power of x, and so on. But when you made the base this number, right? when you made the base this number, something unusual happened. Namely, when we tried to take this not 2 to the power of x, not 3 to the power of x, when you took e to the power of x, when we had a look at that derivative, that blue graph, what was it? It was exactly the same as the graph we started with. In other words, you take this e to the x business, when you differentiate it, what you get back is e to the power of x. It's a weird function because unlike all these other ones we've seen, when you differentiate, some radical transformation happens. But when you differentiate this guy, right, you get back exactly the same function. Now, it's very important um, that I point out, you can see my dots going here, right? Um, on your calculator display, if your calculator is the same as mine, it stops at a really convenient slash inconvenient place. Because you'll notice, does yours say the same thing as mine? Yep. Um, 1828, 1828. And it seems like, oh, I wonder if that continues, that pattern, 1828 and so on, right? It doesn't. If you go back to your computer, which is probably still open, um, in Desmos, what I'd like you to do is uh, type in, type in the letter E. And it'll give you a few more decimal places, not a whole lot more. If you want more, you can go into Google and ask it what E is equal to. But you notice you've got 1828, 1828, and then the pattern just kind of explodes, right? Um, this number E, just type in E and it'll give it to you, right? This number E is a bit like the number pi, right? Um, pi's decimal places, they keep on going and changing forever and ever and ever. Um, e is actually a special category of number called a transcendental number, um, which makes it really super special. Okay. All right. So you've got that there on your screen. Now, this guy here is going to be really important for us to, to use, right? Um, we can actually understand a whole family of functions like this on top of all of the different ex, um, differential differ, differentiation stuff that we already know. So if you haven't already, go ahead, open up your textbook, and we're going to see how we can use this. So what we're having a look at here, um, this is the very, very first question in 2C. So if you haven't got it there open, um, you can just have a look with me. Um, the question does not say exactly this, but I'm going to write it like this just to make it easier for us to deal with, as you'll see in a second. Okay? Now, this is not the function we just looked at, right? It's very closely related. It's got that E, that 2.71 business number down there. But then you've got this 2 up in the top, okay? Now, what we want to do here is recognize that this is not just a function. This is a function of a function. Do you remember we learned a rule to deal with differentiating functions when there's functions tucked inside other functions? Does anyone remember what it's called? Uh, yeah, you can write it as f of g of x. Uh, now, is it the product rule? We're going to look at the product rule shortly, but I don't see any product here. This is the chain rule. Okay, can you raise your hand? And if you don't want to, it's fine. But who remembers the chain rule and how to use it? Uh, no, that's the product rule. That's the product rule. Anyone? Yes? No? Okay, all right. Let's, let's review it. And this is exactly why I've written it this way. Okay. Over on the right-hand side here of your working, if you have another color, this might be helpful. What I want us to write is, let... And I'm going to introduce a substitution. I'm going to say let u equal 2x. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to turn this function here into something that looks a bit simpler. Okay? So if u equals 2x, then I can rewrite this original function as y equals e to the power of what? What am I swapping in? Just u, that's all. I've just done that for that. Okay, so far so good. Now why have I done this? It's so that if I have a look at this function here and this function here, I can differentiate both of them individually and then I can put the derivatives together. This is how the chain rule worked and that's why I'm trying to remind you. Okay, so let's have a go at this one first. U equals 2x. If I differentiate this guy, this is just 2. Very good. So I've got that. Fantastic. Come down to this guy. I can differentiate this as well. 
it's not going to be dy on dx anymore. Why not? Have a look closely. Yeah, I've got no x's here, yeah? No x's, so I'm not going to differentiate with respect to x. I'm going to differentiate with respect to u, dy on du. Now, just look closely. Compare whoops, <clears throat> this line to this one, right? This is just that special magic number, 2.71, etc., to the power of our variable here. So when you differentiate it, what did we say when you differentiate e to the power of that? What changes? Is, it, is there a change? No. There's no change at all, right? So if you differentiate e of u, what do you expect to get back? E of to the power of u. Like so. Okay. So I've got one derivative here, one derivative here, and I can put them together to get the actual derivative that I wanted. So this, to refresh your memory, this is the way we stated the chain rule. It's one derivative chained together with the other one. You can see essentially here I'm treating these almost like they're regular fractions. They're not exactly. There's all limits and stuff hiding behind there. But for this case, I can actually treat this to you and this to you like a common thing on the numerator and the denominator. Does that make sense? Yeah. What, do you, what happens when you've got a common thing on the numerator and denominator? Just cancel them, right? Bam, bam, they're all going to go. But I, I'm going to say it's e to the power of u. That's what I worked out, just one line before. And what's this guy? I worked it out over here. It's just 2. Okay. Uh, let's tie this all up in a nice neat bow, right? My original question de never had u's in it. I introduced that to help me solve the question. So since that was something I put in, I better take it back out, right? So I'm going to say the actual derivative, instead of writing it as e to the power of u, what do I swap u out for? e to the power of 2x, very good, uh, multiplied by 2. Usually we write these constant coefficients just out the front. Like so. There's my derivative, okay? Now, this took a little bit of a while because I want us to remember this chain rule, but hopefully now, if you just looked back at this original line here, right? I want us to get to the point where we feel comfortable enough to actually more or less go straight here, right? That 2 that came out, where did it come from in this line? Where did it come from? Yeah, it came from up in the power, right? So essentially what I was doing was treating this guy as a function to differentiate. You differentiate it and you get this 2, right? And then I treat the outside thing as its own function to differentiate. It's e to the power of a thing. What happens when you differentiate? e to the power of something? You just, it just stays the same. Yep, fantastic.